This is Courtney again with CAD Company. Do a quick video on Keith Black Piston Ring End Gap. Uh, there's a instruction sheet that comes in the box of all Keith Black Pistons. They require more end gap on the top ring only. There's a, here's a here's a Keith Black Piston. <coughs> top of the piston runs a little hotter due to the alloy and they put the, the ring the ring land closer to the top uh, we're supposed to make more power up there um, and but the issue is is the uh, the heat gets to the top ring more so than a cast piston that is down farther you see this gap here you know that a cast regular cast piston or a forged piston, the, the ring would be down slightly, okay? A little more away from the heat. So <clears throat> there's a chart in there that tells you how much to, uh, to increase the ring end gap. Normal ring end gap is usually 20 to 24 on a, on a caddy. Um, we suggest you open her up. This is on a street car. Be more on a race car, but at least 30 to 32 thousandths. And by ring and gap, you know, you put the ring in the cylinder, you take a feeler gauge, and you measure the gap. You have to make sure the ring is square in the bore, or you're going to get a distorted reading. If you don't have the tool to, to center it in there, uh, I should have brought one out, but anyway, you can use the piston push it down in a little ways to, to square it up and check it. Now, here's three ways to increase that end gap. The fancy high-tech way is with a ring grinder. It has a dial indicator on it. And once you get it set to zero, you can, you can take off whatever you want reading the dial indicator, okay? And then, of course, check it. But once you get it figured out how much on the dial indicator you really want to take, you can kind of fly through a set and get it done quickly. The other way is with one of these hand grinders. Okay? You chuck this in a vise, <clears throat> put your ring up against it, and you, and you crank while you're, you know, pushing on one side. And, uh, a while you kind of get a hunch at how many revolutions of the wheel gets you close and then you get with this so you got to do a lot of stop and start stop and start and checking them because the amount it cuts off depends on how much pressure you're pushing the ring against with okay then there's the real old school way with a, with a file okay you don't have any of these and you know I mean you, you can you can do it with a file um, takes longer, but use what you got. When you are done, the side you, you were grinding on, it's gonna leave a sharp edge, okay? And you wanna, you wanna knock that off with what works good is like a, a, a stone. You know, you can just knock the little sharp edges off. If you don't, you stand a chance of it scratching the cylinder when it goes in. Now this, this, uh, this machine here, it's got a wheel on the end, okay, where you, you can quickly buff it like, you know, like that. This is very, very fine. I mean, it's almost like, it's almost like rubber. And anyway, that'll take the edge off it. But if you don't increase that end gap, you're risking serious engine damage. If the if the ring gets hot enough, the ends are going to butt up against each other and it's going to seize in the cylinder, okay? When it does that, it rips the top of the piston off because it is thin and especially where there's valve reliefs, okay? So increase the end gap. Make sure you don't run too much timing. 
if you run too much advanced, it increases the heat inside the combustion chamber, closes up the ring gap more. Um, so keep your, your, your tuning reasonable, uh, file those gaps, and uh, Keith Black is a, is a very good piston. We've used, used many of them, and, and uh, I've had uh, customers with engines other than Cadillac and that come in and, you know, that have had problem and it all stems back to they didn't read the instructions. I know, I know it's guys we hate to read instructions or ask for directions, but this is one case you really ought to.